Well, it varies on a lot of different factors. One is the water table elevation, because like digging a hole in the sand at the beach, the water fills up in the hole as fast as based on how high the water level is in the ground. So what you're looking at here is a pond that's been in for several years and it has normalized to the groundwater level. If you dug a hole in the ground 20 feet away, you would find the water level is about the same elevation in that hole as it is right here in the pond. The vegetation that you see along the embankments is also dependent on the soil types. It depends on the time of year. It depends on where the vegetation comes from. Animals transport seeds from one location to another. So you start with a clean pond and over time this vegetation fills in. You'll see the ducks enjoying the water. It will naturally populate with fish from fish eggs that travel on birds legs. Uh, some of them are purposely and put into the pond to control invasive species of vegetation. These ponds are intended to be beautiful, but they also serve a purpose to keep stormwater from flooding the surrounding property and to clean the water so that you're not having oils or sediment wash into the rivers, the creeks, or the wetlands surrounding it. This is called a mitered in section, and it's simply a sloped piece of concrete that will reasonably match the slope of the ground once the ground is shaped around it so that it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. It conveys storm water from the parking lot back to the pond and if you'll notice there's white caps on the end of purple pipe in this situation. After we were provided the as-built documents of the utilities that were in the ground, we designed it, we permitted it, they started construction, they dug the trench for this pipe and mitered in section and found this purple pipe in the ground which is irrigation line. That was not on the as-built plans. So the contractor stopped construction. They called the property owner. The property owner called us and said, why is there a pipe in the ground? We did our research on, and found that it was not identified on the as-builts. So we, and we found a much larger pipe in this situation also in the ground. So we had to redesign this pipe and mitered in section in its length and its elevation underground so that it would weave over and under the piping that couldn't be cut and then this pipe, since we found out it was no longer in use, and that's why it's not on the as built we simply cut the pipe and capped it so they can be reconnected later if somebody wants to use it temporarily. There are other closer pipes for irrigation of the parking lot, since the parking lot's on the opposite side of the building. Uh, we've been told from contractors who we found installed these pipes, they were intended to be temporary whenever the pond was first built and some of the vegetation was planted around it and there was nothing for hundreds of feet to tie into. That was the purpose of this line. And the reason that it was not on the as built was because it was not intended to remain permanently. However, it would have been nice to know that it was there so it didn't shut down construction progress for a few days at the time. It should have been pulled out of the ground or left on a drawing somewhere so that this situation did not happen. These things happen and that's why you hire professionals such as us to get to the bottom of how things are the way they are and not just guess. Somebody could have cut this line and capped it not knowing the purpose. It could have been charged and pressurized and made a big mess once they cut it, but we were able to find out that it was in fact a dead line so there was no issues with cutting the line. Yes. The purpose of stormwater treatment facilities, otherwise known as ponds, is to reduce the amount of sediment that gets washed from a site, the vegetation, the fertilizer, and things like that after it's in place the intent is for the water the pond to collect those things and then scoop it out after 15 20 years it also with the vegetation collects a lot of the nutrients that are washed into the pond so that they don't wind up in our wetlands and our streams it collects here you wind up with oil from time to time you wind up with uh, algae blooms due to overheating of the water there's a wide variety of things that you want these ponds to intercept before they go into our natural resources. The state has mandates for the size of the pond, the depth of the pond, how much water it has to be able to accept based on the intensity of the rainfall so that when the water does rush into the pond, it doesn't rise and flood the surrounding communities that were here, the downstream areas. We don't want, because of all the impervious area created by buildings and parking lots that don't absorb water, for that water to flood right into the neighboring properties or into streams that can't handle that much extra water. So it runs into the pond, the pond rises, and then it, based on the size of the control structure, allows it to drain more slowly into the surrounding areas.